Singer 319K is put in its case. Hook gear, inspect and clean, season two, episode 38. Let's get right into it. We're going to have a look right in there at the hook. What we have here is the gearbox. This bar here is the hook driving shaft. Comes down from the canvas steel driving belt. So this is hook driving shaft. There's the, the hook where the bobbin goes and all that there. But the gear is actually in here and it gets quite dirty in here. I'm thinking that it's going to be pretty good because there was a, you know, the fella or the lady already looked at it at the shop. So let's just have a little look-see and see what we're going to find here. Okay, here's the other screw. So that's all pretty good. There's not a whole lot of gunk or varnish or anything on the inside of the lid. It's a little bit of just a little bit of of grease around there. And and that is varnish on the end there. See it is stuck on, but you can see it is dry. It's got to be cleaned anyway. So I need you to look right here. And that is actually the point of the needle. This may not be the best angle. Let me see if I can improve on the angle. So where you want to watch is right there. That's the needle. I don't know if you'll be able to see it bend from this watch. I'm just going to rotate it. See it? There, it's bending. Now it's back. There. And that's because the timing is out. So that's what it's doing. This is all way off because the hook is down here by my finger and it's supposed to be up near by the needle. So that's telling me that the timing is off. The first thing I'm going to check after I take that needle out is we'll see in the accessories box we have some 13 needles as opposed to the regular 50. I just like to look better than you know have it looks so industrial when it's just sitting there on the pegs you know steel pegs so I'm gonna put it in the case and see if I like it that way it may be too bulky but we'll see once we get once I get the machine in there like I said we're gonna put the machine in this case okay we're gonna get started I'm gonna close the doors for noise reduction I'm also going to turn on three lights the case. Now I did wash this in the kitchen sink the other day and there was one small note that I wanted to mention is that this area here is hollow and water when you, if you're washing it water can get in there so I made clear I made certain that when I was drying it I put a towel on a pillow and then I maneuvered this in various positions so that the water would drain out. And then I also dried it with a hair dryer. And uh, so I don't think I'm going to have any water issues. I didn't have to take these off or anything like that. But, you know, like I say, it is glued or whatever plastic. So, so everything's still good there. It came pretty clean. Uh, I just use dishwashing soap liquid and, and water. I, I tend to go for gentle first. But anyway, there it is there. So I do have the pedal there, and it's a nice green color. But it's the pedal is wired by itself into the motor. And then there's another plug that you plug into the receptacle and plug into the machine. And that's how it gets power. But that cord is green, not brown like this. But I can't find the green one. So I had a brown one. So that's why I have a brown cord. There's the, the drilled hole where those posts on the bottom will go. There's two of them. There's one there and there's one there. So I've got the sewing machine lying on its side, as you can see. And I've got a couple of towels rolled up underneath it. And it's a lot easier to attach the bottom to the sewing machine than to attach the sewing machine to the bottom. Unless you've done it before and you've loosened the screws on the sewing machine so that when you put it on top there it's not gonna hesitate. But that's a very easy way uh, for me. That's a very easy way for me because then there's no accident. So there that one got centered and is on its one got centered and is on its way home. Then we'll tighten this one up a bit. That's nice and snug. There's that little plastic tab. Once I close it, I pull it over there so it'll keep the... Cool. I'm not a professional filmmaker. I'm just a guy that likes to play with machines and make movies of it all, you know? That's all. Okay, this screw is not loose enough, and that's why this post has not gone in full tilt. And 
Just have to undo the screw and it slides right in. So now I'm going to do the screw up, I'm going to tighten the screw. And there was a little, a little knob there that once I had it put down I, in position I could just do that and there it's, it's, it's good to go there. So I think that's good. That's how I'm going to, that's how I'm going to sew with the machine after it's threaded. Cool. What a beautiful machine. Just, just like everything about it. I'm looking forward to trying to sew it in that position. I think it'll be good. The Singer 319K story is that before I bought it from the vendor, the vendor had taken it into a, a sewing store in Ottawa, Ontario, and it was tuned up by the sewing machine repair people in there. In front of the machine here I have uh, some boxes with accessories. And I'm just gonna show you this one first, open it. And you can see there's a whole bunch of, a, I believe that's a ruffler. And uh, these need to be cleaned. So, that's, and actually there's quite a bit in there. You know what, let's just, Here, let's take a look at those. So those are pretty cool. You know, I, I'm not even really familiar with a lot of the feet because, like I say, my sewing uh, adventure is just starting. I've just been a restorer up until now, but I believe that is called a ruffler. I have seen that before, but I don't know what it's called. I think this one, I don't know if that's a piper of some sort. I think there's one called a piper. And I think that's just like a gauge, like you can put on the on the throat plate or near the throat plate as an accessory in one of those holes there and have it so that your your cloth always stays aligned. So you can just let the machine take it up instead of having to manually guide it yourself. So those are pretty cool. So there's the fashion discs there and some of them have a, they usually have a little design on them. But you can see these are 306 because they fit right on there. And uh, there's a, a little stud back there that maybe if I move it forward. Let me see it. Oh, geez, I'm going to have to move it a whole lot to, to get it all the way around. So in here, we have some, those are 206 by 13, size 14 needles. Indeed. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we got a couple of... Uh, bobbins that this machine uses. I think those are 66 class 66 bobbins. But here's the interesting thing. Here's the receipt that we had talked about. He's included four size 14 206 by 13 needles there. There's a number 2029 so I don't know I, it, and it's written in the red ink just for the needles so so that's what he did there. The total cost for getting this uh, machine maintained was $122.59 Canadian and I paid $160 Canadian to the lady for the to the vendor for the for this wonderful machine. And as I said if you if you know the the Canadian dollar is only worth 75% of a of a, of the of the Yankee dollar of the American dollar. So uh you know, basically, it cost her just under 95 American to get it serviced, and then I paid her 120 US for the machine. So she made like 23 bucks US. Uh, but it was—I thought it was really a great idea that she that she thought of that to uh, to uh, to get it serviced, you know, and then sell it. So, so it's nice to have the receipt. Uh, it, it adds a little bit of history or. Uh, reference to the to the machine gives it more of a story, you know, because this is I don't know. Some would say this is about stories. Some would argue otherwise. <laughs> but there's the receipt and all that stuff, so that's pretty cool. What else are we going to look at? There are some of the, and what I'm going to do for those babies, those uh, these feet, is I'm going to put them in, uh, in a container with some crud cutter and uh, let them uh, get degreased and get the dirt off them, see if we can get them cleaned up with a, with a toothbrush after they soak for a bit. Okay, here I've got a container, and uh, this is 100% crud cutter. That one's really nice and, nice and grimy. Throw it in there. And so there we've got the ones that we want. Now we'll just give it a good spray. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna take this lid off. 
I've got a big container in the closet. So I'm going to let that sit for, and it cost about 95, just under $95 to, to get it maintained. And then I paid $120 for the machine. So the vendor, after spending, you know, she only made like 23 or $24 after getting the machine maintained. A really great thing about that is that in the, the box with some of the accessories and stuff, there is a receipt from the sewing shop, sewing machine shop in uh, Ottawa. And uh, the prices I quoted were US dollars. The, the receipt, when we looked at the receipt, it, uh, it will show in Canadian dollars. I paid her 160, she paid 125 uh, to get it fixed. But then, you know, because the Canadian dollar is worth about 25% less than the American, it's easier just to deal with, with, with the US dollars. I'd like to thank you for viewing this film. I hope that you found something of value for you. Once again, thank you. Stay safe and have fun. Adios amigos. For those of you who are interested, and I know that some of you are by your messages, here is the current setup. I've got the yellow work lights right in front of us, and I'm going to pan to the left. There you can see the 301 and the 221 back there on the other table. And uh, there's the, the candy box with all the accessories and feet and stuff. Here's the, the tripod. And I've got it set for horizontal. I had the camera sitting there. See that the timing was off. And so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. See, I have these two little electric lights and I like them because they're kind of portable and I can get them right to the place. The, the big work light is, is fantastic. But anyway, so enough said about that. Just wanted to give you a short little clip for those of you that are interested. And uh, thanks for your patience, all the, the people that aren't. Okay, so these uh, feet, these accessories uh, and feet and that, They've been in the 100% cred cutter for about an hour and 25 minutes. So all I'm going to do is hold them over, give them a little scrub. So just like that. Nothing too intense. This is a first or initial cleaning. Some of these will only need a first or initial cleaning. Some may need, you know, two or three cleanings or, or, or stronger stuff than crud cutter. But, so all I'm doing is just doing that one by one. So what I did was I ended up straining the, the feet here through a through a strainer in the kitchen sink and I washed all the cut, cred cutter off and then I filled that container up with hot water and I rinsed the the feet in the hot water and got the hot good the hot water got the residue cred cutter off and then I dumped out the water and the blue stuff you're looking at that's a hundred percent dishwashing soap dishwashing liquid and I'm going to let that sit in there for probably half an hour or so. And I find dishwashing soap, like the dishwashing liquid that you do your dishes in, in the sink, I find that a really effective cleaner. It's gentle because it's made for humans to wash their dishes with. In that respect, it's gentle, but it really cleans well. Anyway, I'll continue along with the cleaning. And every once in a while I just give the, the pot a little stir and I want to make, make sure that that ruffler, it gets to spend some time in the, in the pretty soap. Isn't that a nice color? I don't know. And uh, for educational purpose it's uh, Dawn Ultra. Um, I like that brand. Uh, I'm not promoting the brand but uh, that's what I'm using. To, it works. I mean I use that a lot to clean these uh, parts after they've been cred cuttered and rinsed. So they'll get another, I'll put them in a, in a rinse container and then I'll probably, I'll save the soap, 
or put a little in with the rinse container and do a little more scrubbing, then rinse them off, and then we'll put them under the hair dryer. Um, I won't force you to, you know, I won't put 10 minutes of hair drying on here. <laughs> They'll be like five seconds at the beginning and five seconds at the end, and uh, uh, we'll look at the wonderful results. So that's what, uh, that's what I'm playing with now. And I left the door, the windows open, the doors open, because I just wanted to make a quick clip here. But yeah, there is construction out there. It's construction season in downtown Montreal. And the other thing is, if you're going to hold them in your hand and dry them, then you have to put an oven mitt on your hand. Yeah, so this is how you do it if you want to hand bomb it. You have to have a, an oven mitt so you don't get burnt from the hair dryer. See, that one fell down. No, we'll do. We'll put them back in the strainer. They've uh, had their free time here. It, I don't, it only needs about five minutes or so of, of drying, and maybe not even that. Sometimes depends on how many pieces and all the rest of it. <laughs> 